Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today I'm just outside my door in some woods near my house. And what I want to find is a centipede and particularly a bark centipede. It's uh, early winter here, but today is a pretty warm day. Temperatures in the 40s or 50s Fahrenheit. And a lot of these organisms are still active underneath logs and in the leaf litter where they're protected from freezing temperatures. So today's episode is going to be on the bark centipede. And let's go see if we can find one now. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's This is a great centipede habitat right here. We have a pile of rotten logs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start turning over some of these logs, looking underneath the leaf litter, peeling back some of the loose bark on these things. And when I come back, I'll have a bark centipede for you. So with a little luck and some patience, I was able to find a bark centipede. Let's take a look at them now. The first thing I think you should know about bark centipedes is their classification. And I've been teaching biology for 35 years, so you know these kinds of things are important to me. First of all, centipedes are in the class Arthropoda. Characteristics of the arthropoda are they have an exoskeleton, they have a segmented body, and they've got jointed appendages. And you can see this centipede has all of those. The centipede is also in the subphylum called Myriapoda. And Myria is a word that means innumerable, and poda refers to feet. So this is an organism that has innumerable feet. That's a good name for it. The name centipede comes from centi, which means a hundred, like a hundred cents, and the word peed, which again means feet. So this word means hundred feet. So it's a little bit of a misnomer because no centipedes actually have exactly a hundred feet, but they do have a lot of feet, as you can see in this guy that's running around. Centipedes, fact number two, what should know about centipedes? Well, you should know where you find them. Centipedes are found, as you can see where we were looking, under logs, underneath rotten pieces of bark, around trees. They're the master predators and have a flattened body with one pair of legs per segment, and they can move around really fast. Sometimes they come into people's basements or a garage or a outbuilding, but typically they're there because they've got some dampness. If you have problems with centipedes in your house, the first thing you need to consider is how can I make this area that they're found in less damp? Fact number three, what I think you should know, centipedes are predators. They're carnivores, which means they eat other organisms, and they're fast and they're agile. For a predator, speed is an advantage. It can quickly overtake any prey that it might encounter. The centipedes have several modifications or adaptations that make them ideal predators. For example, the last appendage on a centipede are modified legs that can be used as a pincher. They're not venomous, but they can use a grab on a hold of prey, or they can pinch a would-be predator. They also have two front legs that have been modified as pinchers. Sometimes these pinchers are called fangs, and some biologists call them forcipules. Nonetheless, whatever they're called, they're very strong, they're very sharp, and you can see here, they're really scary looking. So these things can pinch hard, they can capture, use to be capture prey, and they can use to be envenomate prey and paralyze the prey that they're intending to catch and eat. So these pincers are modifications of their front legs and they can be used to pinch and deliver venom. Fact number four, what I think you should know about centipedes. I think you should know what they eat. And centipedes will eat just about anything they can capture and overpower. Most of the time that would include insects, spiders, slugs, any 
organisms, crustaceans, insects that might be underneath the leaf litter or under a log, including possibly some small salamanders and worms. Fact number five you should know, you should know that these guys can bite. When I captured this guy, I did not use my fingers. I used a glass jar with a lid and I wrangled him into that with some care. They can bite a person if you picked up a centipede with your fingers or put your hand on them and it felt it couldn't escape any other way. It'll use those pincers to bite you, pinch you, and envenomate you. The venom is more like a bee sting. You're not going to die from it unless you have some uh, unusual allergic reaction to it. And over time, the, the pain and the stinging will go away. Centipedes are dangerous to the prey they hunt. They're not so dangerous to people, but it's not a nice experience to be bitten by a centipede. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Centipedes, they make me a little squeamish too. I don't know, but they're part of the environment. They're part of the ecology and they have their place and we recognize them. If you like what I do at Nature at Your Door, please subscribe, give me a like. It helps me spread the word and get more people engaged in our learning community. And don't forget to leave me a comment. I taught for over 40 years and I miss interacting with my students. Please leave me a comment or a question and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.